TapCut is a versatile video editor designed for creating videos on iOS, Android, or desktop devices. It is not only free but also user-friendly, providing easy access to common features we would find on any other professional video editor. In this video tutorial, I guide you through everything you need to know about the CapCut video editor and its editing interface. You can find a link in the video description that leads to their official website where you can download and install this free video editor. Additionally, you'll find specific installation instructions tailored to your computer's operating system, whether it's Windows or iOS. Let's get started. This is the CapCut Windows editing interface. When you open up the CapCut editor, this is the first window you will see. This editing interface is divided into four major parts. The panel below, on the bottom third of the screen, is the editing timeline. Right above it is the preview panel. To the left of this preview window is the Tools and Elements panel, while the right contains the details and modifications, and could also display the item's modification menu for whatever item is selected in the editing timeline. To get started, the first thing you're going to do is click on the Import button, and it's going to open up the File Explorer which will allow you to locate and select all the clips you need to edit. To select multiple files, hold the Control key and click on the files you want to add. Once you're done, click on Open. All the files you selected will be placed under the Media tab. You can import as many audio files, pictures, and video files as you want. If you click on any of these media files, a preview will be shown in the player. To begin editing, drag and drop any of the media files into the timeline. Note that the first video file will be automatically placed in the default timeline layer. You can also add videos to the timeline using the blue plus icon that appears whenever you hover your mouse pointer over any of the media files. The file will be automatically placed wherever the player head is located on the timeline. Now, let's see what other parts of this editing interface contains. In the player and preview section, you can see timestamps. The one in blue shows where the player head is located, while the one in white shows how long the entire timeline is. Towards the right, the lens icon is used to zoom in on the player preview. The ratio button is used to set the aspect ratio of the entire video project. You can choose from options like 16x9, 4x3, 9x16, and so on. YouTube videos are usually 16x9, so that's what I'll be using for this video project. Apart from using the spacebar to play and preview the entire video project, you can use your mouse to drag the player head back and forth across the timeline to wherever you want it to be. Now, let's talk about the items editing interface or panel on the right-hand side. Whenever you select any media that's placed on the timeline, this tab is going to be opened up for you. First, you have the Video and Audio, Speed, Animation, Adjustment, and AI Stylized tabs. Under Video or Visuals, you have tabs like Basic, Cutout, Mask, and Enhance. You may not need to know all of these yet, we'll come back to them later. The Basic tab is what you're going to need 80% of the time to adjust and edit video and audio clips. Under Basic, we have the Scale button, which allows you to zoom in or enlarge the image size. Also, there's a toggle for the Uniform Scale, which lets you scale the width and height of the image independently. The X and Y position tabs are used to align the clip horizontally and vertically in the viewer. Although you can use your mouse to drag by holding the media in the preview panel and dragging it around to any position. For more precise arrangements, you would have to use the values in the X and Y position. By the way, a value of 1 in each of these represents 1 pixel. The rotate tool does what it sounds like. It rotates the image around a central point. Whenever you want to undo all of the changes made to the clip under any of these parameters, you just have to click on the rounded arrow on top of any of these sections. The blend mode and opacity are used to control the way the video graphics would appear in the preview. There's a link to more in-depth tutorials for specific use cases in the video description of this video in case you want to check it out. Coming over to the left-hand side, we have the section for Editing Elements and Assets Library. The first tab here is the Media tab, which includes all the editing assets, clips and files that you have imported for the project. It holds everything including sound clips, music, video clips, and images. Next to it is the Audio tab, which contains a library of sound effects and copyright-free music provided by CapCut themselves. You can take any sound clip from this section and add it to your timeline. The text tab contains text templates. As you can see, you need to be online to download and use any of these free text templates for the first time. All you need to do is add these templates to your timeline, and then you can edit them to represent whatever you want. To edit these text templates, you need to come over to the item editor panel on the right-hand side here. This text tab is also used to add text to the video editing project. 
The stickers section also contains a library of plenty of icons and animated visuals, which can be added to the timeline as well. Although you can't really customize these stickers as much, you can resize and animate them with the editing panel. On the timeline, you can increase or decrease the time duration by dragging and extending the clip or shortening it. The effects section contains several video effects, and adding effects to the videos in CapCut is super simple. All you have to do is scroll through all the presets, find one that you want to add to the video, click on it to preview and see how it affects the video, and then you can use the blue plus icon to add it to the timeline or simply drag and drop the effect onto the timeline. The item editing panel also lets you edit and make changes to the visual effects. As I said earlier, you can drag either end of any of these items to extend or shorten the time duration on the timeline. The transition section has a lot of transition effects that are used to add transitions between two video clips or image clips on the timeline. This transition effect only works for visuals, it cannot be added between overlay elements or audio clips. To add any transition effect, all you have to do is locate it by finding the transition effect you want to add. Click on it to preview. By default, it's going to preview the transition on a cut between two clips that are closest to the player head. In this case, this cut right here. You can also search for other transition effects under any of these sections and preview all of them until you find the one you want to add. As soon as you find a transition effect, all you have to do is drag and drop the effect in between the clips. Occasionally, you may get a notice like this stating that it's going to create duplicate frames for transitions. There's nothing wrong with this, it just means that, in order for CapCut not to shorten the clips on the timeline and thereby mess up the timeline, they would need to create duplicate frames so that the transition can work smoothly, without affecting the length or positions of any of the clips involved. Just click on OK and continue working. To decide how long the transition is going to last, you can click on either end of the transition and drag to extend or shorten. To be more precise with the timing, you can use the transition parameter editor to precisely time how long the duration would last. And when you preview your work, you're going to see what the transition looks like. Much like effects, the filter section contains a variety of color grading effects that can be applied to the clips or any of the clips on the timeline. You can also preview the filters by clicking on any of them to see how the video looks. To add any of these filters to the video, all you have to do is use the plus button or simply drag and drop the effect onto the timeline. There are several effects and filters in this section. The adjustments section is used to add custom adjustments in terms of color grading presets, or lots to the video. But most of the time, you won't be needing this unless you are a professional editor. Alright, that's it for the basics of the user interface. Back in the media tab, which holds all your editing assets, you can drag and drop any of the editing elements to whatever point you want to place them on the timeline. And as I stated before, the elements editor on the right is used to make amendments to any of the items or clips placed on the timeline. Apart from extending or shortening the duration, you can also drag and reposition any of these elements on the timeline. But what you have to know is that elements of different types would always occupy different horizontal positions, or in other terms, every single layer on the editing timeline can only hold similar items. That's one of the reasons why they are also color-coded. Now, directly above this editing timeline are some important tools which we are going to go over. These two here are the cut or split tool, which is used to make a cut between any of the items on the timeline. Alternatively, you can use the Ctrl plus B shortcut keys to make a cut. There is also the split and delete left, as well as the split and delete right buttons, which do exactly as it sounds. This undo arrow is used to undo any action or changes that you've made to the timeline. The one next to it is the redo button. Alternatively, you can use the Ctrl plus Z and Ctrl plus R shortcuts respectively. Whenever you select any clip and click on this delete icon, you are completely removing that selected item from the timeline. The reverse media icon is used to play and reverse the selected video clip, but it's still going to appear on the timeline. But whenever it's being previewed, it would play back in reverse. The mirror button is used to horizontally flip the selected video or image clip. The rotate icon is used to rotate the selected clip by 90 degrees at a time. The crop tool is used to crop the selected image or video file. You can use all these edge handles to adjust the cropping. This is the editing timeline that contains all the items and elements that have been added to the video editing project. Now, to zoom in or zoom out on this editing timeline, all you have to do is use any of these icons shown here, or alternatively, hold the control key and then use the mouse scroll wheel. This is the main video timeline or default timeline. So to add B-roll, all you have to do is drag and drop the media from your media pool. 
You can also add as many layers as needed, but whatever layer is the topmost would show up first, and then the next layer below it, in that order until you get down to the default layer. Here in the timeline, the relative length of any item as it appears on the timeline is equivalent to the duration of the item, and if a clip is too long, you can trim it down or completely cut and delete the unwanted parts. You can also drag and reposition any of the clips to whatever position you want them to be on the timeline. Whatever you can do on the main layer, you can also do it on every other layer. I'm talking about stuff like adding effects and transitions between B-roll clips. Now let's see how to adjust and edit any individual video clip. It doesn't matter if it's a video clip or image, this is going to work. I would be using this clip right here to demonstrate. As I showed in the beginning, there are a lot of sections and different tabs in the item editing panel. Whenever you have a clip on the timeline, there's a whole lot of things you can do to that clip, but for now, we would only be going through the basics. This section is where you edit the scale, position, and blending. The following tab is where you adjust the audio for that clip. If any clip you have placed on the timeline has audio, you would be able to work on the audio right here. You can also speed up clips by using the normal speeding or the speed curves. The animation tab is where you apply in, out, or combo animation to the selected item. As you can see, there are several in and out animation presets that are on this page. And when you click on anyone, it's going to give you a visual preview of how that clip is going to be animated right here in the player. The adjustment section is used to mess around with the video attributes, such as the temperature, the hue, saturation, brightness, contrast, highlights, shadows, illumination, and all others. So that's all for all you need to know about the basics for the CapCut video editor for Windows. I have personally made a playlist for CapCut video editing, which you can check out right here. Thanks for watching.